everybody. Yep. All right. Good evening. Uh, it's good to be able to be here with you all for Ash Wednesday. I do have a couple of announcements about the service and the upcoming couple weeks as we uh, um, go through Lent uh, from COVID style, I guess. Um, so first of all, tonight I will be double masking, wearing gloves, and coming around to put um, ashes on you with a Q-tip. I was It was brought to my attention that other churches are also not only offering it on your forehead, but also if you feel more comfortable with it on your hand, or um, if that still makes you uncomfortable, but you'd like to participate in some way, just let me know and I can do like a blessing from six feet away. So there are options. Uh, just let me know what you would prefer and we'll work with it. Next week, we will have our midweek Lenten services, but they will be streamed on Facebook, so it won't be in the parking lot. Vicki and I will be inside the church, and we'll have hold an evening prayer and a short reflection. Um, that will be live streamed at 7 on Facebook, and then I'll save it and send it out to you uh, via email when it's over. So um, either check your email or uh, tune in live, and you can catch that. Um, during Lent for the other um, midweek services. We'll be here on Sunday as per usual at 9.30 for our regular worship service in the parking lot. So we'd love to have you join us there. And Bible studies during Lent have moved to Tuesdays. So if you need that information, I believe Jenna sent out a link to uh, the church um, email uh, a couple of days ago, but feel free to reach out and I will get you that new um, Zoom link uh, as needed. I believe that is it for announcements. So we'll now begin with worship with Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you hate nothing that you have made and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this evening is from Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for tonight is from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, fifth and sixth chapter. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and yet see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet always making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And tonight our gospel is according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward in heaven from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. 
Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. But truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so, that, so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So this year, uh, Lent feels different. We're not inside our sanctuary. We missed our pancake dinner and healing service yesterday, and we're once again approaching this time of repentance. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm already weary and we haven't even started our journey to the cross yet. These next 40 days are going to be hard. And when I think about it, it makes sense that we're already tired. This past year, we have watched and experienced the closeness of our mortality. We have seen the toll that this can take on us, especially when we so often try to do anything other then recognize our finiteness. Today, though, is Ash Wednesday, when we gather to confront this very truth that we have been living with for almost a year. I will come in just a few minutes. Uh, I'll come around to your cars and put on your foreheads a cross made from ashes, imparting again that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But for me this year, it feels different. It's always been a poignant way to start Lent by telling the truth that we so often try to avoid or ignore. But this year it feels so much more intimate as we have seen death counts rise in our country and around the world. We have contemplated what it means to know this truth, to grasp it, in a new way. What Ash Wednesday proclaims to us, though, is that God breathes new life into everything. This action by God begins in Genesis, when we hear that God forms humanity from the dust of the earth and makes us holy and his, claiming us as his own beloved creations. And this cross that marks us promises us that all things are redeemable. That even in the most broken and scariest and painful situations, God is present with us, breathing new life into all that we struggle with, even and especially death. What we cling to is the hope of this cross. That through this Lenten journey where we will walk with Christ towards Jerusalem, we will experience again the promises of God. 
that we can always turn back to God in repentance, trusting in his grace, knowing that he will do anything for his beloved children. But just as we were sealed with the cross of Christ in our baptism, we are again sealed with the hope, the faith, that God will go to unfathomable reaches to remain with us and to call us his own. In our first reading today, we are called to return to the Lord. In my weariness, so often I wander, trying to handle the wilderness that I'm going through alone, and sometimes asking, where is my God? The same question that ends this lesson. But when I think of God watching my wandering and my weariness, my struggle to do things on my own, my fears and frustrations, my stubbornness, I can almost feel God's eagerness. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We don't return because we fear God. We return because we know God's grace. We know that he is present and desires to walk with us in relationship. We return because we know that his love is steadfast and that he is forever faithful to his promises to us, even when we are faithless. So while we face our earthly end today, we also know that we face it with God standing beside us, ready to redeem our earthly dust with his holy love. So this Lent, instead of focusing on all that we can give up when so much has been changed and, and already given up, I invite you to focus instead on the ways that God extends his grace to us, working new life within us, and drawing us into community where we can share God's love and hope together. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of the day. i uh -huh. 
friends in Christ. Today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life. And our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joys in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. And Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So now I will come around to your cards. And again, the three options, I can put the ashes on your forehead, on your hand, or give you a blessing from a little bit further away, whichever is most comfortable to you.
For those of you who are um, on Facebook joining us, um, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, but also remember God's love and faithfulness to you. We'll now continue with the prayers. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you created the earth and all of its inhabitants, and you declared that it was good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Especially today, we pray for Bonnie, Bob, Betty, Ruth, Doreen, Leona, Erlene, Jan, Sarah, Joanne, David, Barb, Ray, Dot, Judy, Janet, Sandy, Ed, Pastor Mumford, Doug, Joan, Sue, Karen, Nels, Ron, Patricia, Jim, Nick, Wayne, Brian, Liz, Ken, Tressa, Denise, Dr. Sion, Cindy, Kay, Kathy, Jane, and all those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying towards baptism, and call us all to repentance as we were prepared to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And O God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. 
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now if you'll join me in praying the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. If you have a gluten issue, we have gluten-free wafers, um, so just let us know if that's an issue.
blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. And now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, 
honor all people and love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.